So let's pray. Uh, Father, we just thank you so much uh, for the gift of friendship. Thank you how you love everyone here so much. You love them more than we could ever love anyone. And we just thank you for the, for the power that you give us in prayer. I thank you today that no matter what we encounter in this world, greater is he that lives in us than he that lives in this world. And so, Father, there's a lot of spiritual mayhem and warfare going on, but you want us to fight from a place of victory, not for victory, because we are already victorious in Christ Jesus. The battle's already won. So, Father, we just thank you that we don't ever have to fear because we've already won the battle through Christ Jesus. So, God, teach us tonight about how to pray warfare prayers. Teach us how to not give up ground, not stand our ground, but take ground back. And so, Father, we just thank you for the authority and the power that you give us in prayer. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guys, check out this video. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey, Jeff, I'm a car thief. What? I'm here to steal your car because, well, that's my Like I said, we're going to talk about uh, spiritual mayhem in your life and how to pray warfare prayers. And my friend Gary Black, a uh, longtime friend, posted something a few years ago about car thieves. And uh, I uh, added a few things to it, but here's what Gary posted a couple of years ago about car thieves. He said, I'm going to steal your car. I'm serious. I already have a plan. I've been watching your driving habits and observing your daily interests and schedule. To put it another way... I've been observing you, and I understand more about you than you realize. I understand you better than you understand yourself. So when the time is right, I will steal your car, and I'm going to drive it away. And you won't believe how fast it happens, and you won't believe it'll happen to you. And not only will I steal it, but I'm going to chop it up. I know how to take identification numbers from the engine frame and transmission, I know how to sell it to friends of mine who will sell it to friends of theirs and ultimately to strangers. You see, I'm part of a highly effective, active, effective group, and I can say with assurance that you will never see your car ever. Now, maybe you're thinking that's not an effective way to start a message on how to pray and overcome the spiritual mayhem and warfare that no one is exempt from. But let me tell you why that's effective. Because you don't believe that I'm a car thief, do you? Well, I am from New York, so think twice. <laughs> or precisely, you don't believe I'm capable of doing what I just said I would do. Which is exactly why professional car thieves are so good at what they do. You see, you don't believe you're being watched. You don't believe that you're being vulnerable. You simply don't believe that it will ever happen to you. Now, let me share something a little bit more truthful and realistic than that. Hi, my name is Lucifer, and I want to share a little secret with you today. You ready? Here it is. I'm going to steal your soul. I'm going to steal your joy. I'm going to steal your family. I'm going to steal your faith. I'm going to steal your identity. I'm even going to steal your sanity. You see, I've been watching you, and I know you. I know your schedule. I know your habits. I know what you do when no one's looking. I know what tempts you, and I know how to capitalize on that. And when I make my move, it'll happen fast. It'll happen so fast, you'll be dazed and confused trying to figure out how could this ever happen to me. I'll attack your family. I won't leave out your children either. I'll attack them. I'll distract you, derail you. I'll resist you, and ultimately do my very best to destroy you. By the way, I have friends that will help me. I'll chop up your soul, and I'll pass it down the line to them. My friends and I will invade your mind, your body, your emotions, and I will paralyze you with crippling thoughts and paralyzing fears. I'll attack you physically, mentally, and emotionally. And at just the right time, 
I'll steal your joy and drive it off a cliff. I'll put thoughts of doubt, discouragement, difficulty, despair, depression, discomfort, darkness, just to cloud your mind. I know God's word better than you. And I'll make you doubt it, deny it, distort it. Eventually, never, ever believe or submit to it. Because I'm the best liar in the universe, I love making you think my voice and the things I suggest to you are coming from your Father in heaven. But they're coming from me, the Father of lies, which, by the way, I love that title. I absolutely love it when you blame God instead of me for all the horrific things that were done to you and the people you love. I'm so good at what I do, I'll make you live your life so sure of yourself that you actually think that at the end of your life, on Judgment Day, you're actually going to change God's mind about what His Holy Spirit wrote in His book, the Bible. Friends, you should know I'm good at making people do these things. One of the reasons is you don't believe I can do this. You don't believe I have a vast network of friends helping me. You don't believe I'm watching. You don't believe I'm studying you. You don't believe I know you, but I know you better than you know yourself. I love people like you, self-sufficient, self-assured, prideful, because you don't even know you're being deceived, and I love that most of all. One of my best friends, well, he's the spirit of addiction, and he, he wrote and shared this letter with me that he wrote for all of his followers. It said, dear friend, I've come to visit once again. I love to see you suffer mentally, physically, spiritually, and socially. I want to make you restless so you can never relax. I want to make you agitated and irritable so everything and everybody makes you uncomfortable. I want you to be confused and depressed so you can't think clearly and positively. I want to make you angry and hateful toward the world for the way it is and the way you are. I want you to feel sorry for yourself and blame everything but me for the way things are. I want you to be deceitful and untrustworthy. And I want you to manipulate and con as many people as possible. I want to make you fearful and paranoid for no reason at all. I want you to wake up during all hours of the night screaming for me. You know you can't sleep without me. I'm even in your dreams. I want to be the first thing you think about every morning and the last thing you think about before you black out. I'd rather kill you, but I'd be happy enough to put you back in a hospital, another institution, or back in jail. But you know I'll be waiting for you when you get out. See, I love to watch you slowly go insane. I love to see all the physical damage that I'm causing you. I can't help but sneer and chuckle when you shiver and shake, when you freeze and sweat at the same time, and when you wake up with your sheets and blankets soaking wet. Yes, it's amazing. Yes, it is amazing how much destruction I can be to your internal organs while at the same time destroying your brain, destroying it bit by bit. And I deeply appreciate how much you are sacrificing for me, the countless good jobs you have given up for me, all the friends you have deeply cared for that you gave up for me, and especially for the loved ones, your family, the most important people in the world, you threw even them away from me. I cannot express in words the gratitude I have for the loyalty you have for me. You sacrificed all these beautiful things in life just to devote yourself completely to me. But do not despair, my friend, for on me, you can always depend. After you have lost all these things, you can still depend on me to take even more. You can depend on me to keep you in a living hell. Forever yours, your addiction. You see, all my friends are special like that. They're part of a loyal, dedicated team that helps me make people like you believe my version of Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. They're always willing to help me fulfill the plans I have for you, plans to bankrupt you, to hurt you financially, emotionally, relationally, physically, socially, and most importantly, spiritually. Plans to give you a hopeless future. I'm really good at keeping you from calling on God and praying. I specialize in leading you away from the cross so God can never hear, take, and carry your burdens. I love doing everything in my power to keep you from seeking and running after God because I have torn your heart in pieces. I will be found by you, declares Satan, and I will keep you in captivity. 
So like I said, we're going to talk about how to win the spiritual battles in your life and overcome the spiritual mayhem and warfare in your life. And frankly, I just did. See, the devil's real, and he hates you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy all your relationships, your marriage, your friendships. He wants to destroy your finances, your life. He would be happy if you take your own life. He has a deliberate, willful plan against your life. He has a goal to destroy your mind, your body, your spirit, or all three. His purpose in doing this is to keep God's purpose from you, deny God the glory he might receive from your life, and ultimately destroy you. He seeks to replace God with himself in your life. The devil not only dis he desires not only to destroy what you have, your possessions, your career, your reputation, your character. He seeks to destroy who you are. He wants to destroy your peace, your joy, your happiness, your contentment, your enthusiasm for life, your ability to take risks, your generosity, and all other emotional states that are actually healthy and good. The devil has attacked every person that has ever lived, and you are no exception. And as long as you're alive and the devil exists, you will experience attacks. You will experience spiritual mayhem, warfare. You are in a war. Revive guys, for every day you celebrate your sobriety, the devil is planning a relapse. What are you going to do to counter? You've got to have a battle plan, as Ryan was talking about. You have to have a plan. That's the bad news, now that I've made everybody depressed. Here's some good news. You were born to win. You were born to take authority, to take dominion. 1 John 4, 4, greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. But listen to this. Satan is not afraid of you. He's afraid of who's in you. The Holy Spirit in you. Greater is he who is in you than he that lives in the world. So when God's Holy Spirit is in you, you never, ever have to be afraid of the enemy and anything that he'll ever do against you, to you. Actually, you have power over him. You have dominion over him. But here's the sad thing. Many Christians who say they're Christians don't believe in the reality of Satan. The Barner Group did a study in 2009, and only one in four Christians believe. Christians, this is the state of the church, believe in the reality of Satan. In the same study, and this is not surprising, only 38% of Christians believe in the existence and power of the Holy Spirit. But I want to tell you today that the devil is alive and well on planet Earth set on destroying the work of Jesus Christ wherever he can. Scripture clearly teaches this. The Apostle Paul said we, know, we don't battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. And Satan loves it when people refuse to believe in him. That means he's totally camouflaged and covered by their lack of belief, which allows him to come under the radar, undetected, to wreak havoc in your life. The question is not whether he exists or whether we're engaged in spiritual warfare or whether we're tempted. The answers are clear. He does exist. We are engaged in warfare. We do get tempted every day. The question we have to ask is how can we resist? How can we overcome? And how can we be victorious in every single one of those scenarios? Because if you don't combat this type of warfare strategically, it will take you out. And you'll be another casualty of war because of your casual approach to prayer, the word of God, and allowing the Holy Spirit to empower you. Warfare praying is simply believing you have the authority in Christ to exact judgment on the enemy of your soul and experience what no weapon formed against you will prosper really means. It's power praying. 
fighting from the place of victory, trusting in the finished work of Christ that gives you resurrection power to take dominion and authority over every ruler, every authority, every power of this dark world against all spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms because that's your heritage. That's what you inherit when you trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You're part of a royal family with authority and power to exact judgment on the enemy of your soul. So here's a strategic battle plan that you can pray and get others to pray for as you reject any and all casual approaches to living for God. And I want you to pray these prayers on a daily basis. Years ago, I was probably about two weeks into being a Christian. Almost two decades ago, someone gave me a little book called Strong in the Lord. And all these prayers I'm going to be sharing with you tonight are in this book. And at the end of the night and at the end of this book, all these prayers and all these scriptures were put together in one prayer. So I'm going to share all these scriptures and I'm going to share them all in a prayer at the end that you can take home with you. We make copies for everyone. But here's what I want you to pray each and every day. You've got to open up the book of Ephesians. Now, we're going to do a whole talk. This is not a warfare talk. This is just sort of a lecture on how to pray these prayers over your life. We're going to do a whole warfare talk on putting on the armor of God. But look what Ephesians 6, 11 says. It says, put on the full armor of God so that you can, stay, you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. If you're filling in the blanks, there's your first fill in the blanks. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Did you get that? Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Did you think that your spouse, your child, your boss, the person who abused you is the wrong enemy? That we're fighting against the wrong enemy? Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. You see, there are some people that are giving up ground every day. There are some people who are standing their ground, standing on the promises, praying like this, but then there are some people who are taking back ground. God wants you to take back ground that's rightfully yours. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God made it for good so that you can take that ground back because it's rightfully yours. So I want you to pray. You have to open up Ephesians, and you've got to pray the full armor of God. We'll do a whole teaching on what it means to put on the full armor of God. But you've got to do that every day. You've got to get dressed for battle. Now I want you to turn to Revelation 12, 9 through 11. It'll be up on the screens. You're going to need your Bibles for this. Look how verse 9 opens up. This great dragon, the ancient serpent, called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. With all his angels. Wreaking havoc on you all the time. That's where we are today. The great dragon, the devil, is thrown down. But watch this. This is what people miss. And it's very important for you to get this. It says, then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. This is important. Don't miss this. It has come at last. Salvation. Everybody say salvation. salvation. And power. Everybody say power. power. And the kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. kingdom. Of our God and the authority. Everybody say authority. Salvation, it has come at last. Salvation, power, kingdom, and authority. This is important. Don't miss those four things. You may want to underline them. For the accuser, anybody ever hear an accusing voice? You're not good enough. You'll never amount to anything. You'll never recover. You'll never be sober. You'll never, you'll never be free. The accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth. The one who accuses them before our God day and night. And they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their life so much that they were afraid to die. So that's a triple threat action plan of how to defeat the enemy. And when I played basketball, and I had a basketball in my hand, if I just stood up like this, okay, 
I couldn't do much if I had a ball in my hand. But if I got in a triple threat position like this, I could do one of three things. I could dribble past my opponent, okay, or I could pass, or I could shoot it. And that opponent couldn't do anything about it because I was in that triple threat position. And God wants us to be in a spiritual triple, 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 triple threat position, okay, so that the enemy can't stand, can't, can't handle what we have to offer. But listen, before you do those three things, you got to establish those four things in your life, right? What are the four things again? Salvation. You got to establish salvation. You got to establish this relationship with Jesus Christ because these things have come. And once you establish salvation, that you're a follower of Jesus, you repent of your sins, turn from your sins, turn to Jesus Christ, you are safe. Now you have power. Salvation establishes power. We're talking about resurrection power, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that defeated Satan, defeated the cross, defeated sin, defeated the grave, and is now your power. You have that power within you. So salvation opens up the door for you to inherit power. Not only do you inherit power, but you inherit the kingdom of God inside of you. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. Salvation opens up the door to power, which opens up the door to the kingdom so that you're living under kingdom principles, under kingdom power, and now the fourth one is now you're living under kingdom authority, which means you can exact judgment on the enemy because of what you inherited through Jesus Christ. And now you can apply the three things to defeat the enemy, the blood of the lamb. You got to learn how to pr pray the blood. You got to plead the blood, pray the blood, apply the blood. You got to testify what the blood has done for you. You got to put, when you want to get down and dirty, you apply that blood over you and say, Satan, you want to get to me? You got to go through the blood that defeated you on the cross. And you apply that blood over people you love. Every single day. Now you're probably wondering, well, what is my testimony? You're probably thinking, well, I don't have a testimony. It's not just your personal story. It's what you speak out loud. And so many people pray silent prayers, and the devil can't hear your prayers. You have to pray these prayers out loud. The devil's not omniscient or omnipresent. He, he doesn't know what you're thinking. Now, he can put thoughts in your head, but he can't hear your thoughts. So it's important that you pray to God, but by praying to God, Satan hears your prayers, and he has to do what you tell him to do in Jesus' name. You have to put him on notice. You have to let him know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Get excited about this stuff. Okay. Where's my water? Okay. And the third one is your assurance of salvation. Once you lose your fear of death, to know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, Satan loses half his power over you. To know that you don't belong in this world. It's just a temporary stop. And those are the three things that Scripture says we defeat the enemy. The blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, the assurance of salvation. And you got to speak words of authority. Get behind me, Satan. You won't get to my kid. You won't get to my spouse. You don't get in my house. You don't get in my body. Get out in Jesus' name. You got to get dirty. You got to get down. If he comes at you, you come back at him. And you got to know how to pray Matthew 18. Verse 18, truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What in the world does that mean? Is that a rodeo? It says God has given us the keys to the kingdom to bind the enemy and loose the power of God. That's all that means. God has given us the keys to the kingdom so we can bind fear. We can bind strife, jealousy, doubt, depression, discouragement, discouragement, confusion. You can bind the strongholds of your life. You can bind that addiction in Jesus' name. I love the amplified version of Matthew 18. It says, that, it says, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not overpower it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth must be what is already bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. You see, as co-heirs with Christ and his representatives on earth, we have the right 
to exercise power over the enemy in Jesus' name. Jesus placed the keys, the keys of the kingdom in the hands of the church. We not only have access to them, but we have a right to use them. As Jesus, the keeper of the keys, gives direction through his Holy Spirit on a daily, or moment to by moment, hour by hour basis, we have the legal authority to execute his plans provided we are walking in humility, holiness, and obedience. You gotta go to 2 Corinthians 10, three through five. You gotta read this every day. You gotta understand what it's saying and you gotta utilize it in your life. Take all thoughts captive and cast down all false reasoning and lies. You hear me say it every week, behind every self-defeating thing that you'll ever do is a lie that you believe. So if there's a lie that you believe, there must be a truth for you to receive. So I gotta take my thoughts captive and cast down all false reasoning and lies. Here's what the scripture says. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. What we're talking about here, the world can't help you. Go to UK and see a psychotherapist. He can't help you with this. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. The world calls them addictions. The Bible calls them strongholds. And strongholds are either pulling you down or you're pulling them down in Jesus' name. Amen? It says this, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Here's the other thing. You got to pray Psalm 91. Someone prayed that for me before the service. You got to pray Psalm 91 over your life. This is a big psalm. 16 great promises of protection. He who dwells in the sh shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, I can dwell in the shelter of God and I can rest. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge. He, I can run to him. He's my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. Watch this. This is what's happening to you every single day. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked if you make the most high your dwelling. Even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a, a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. 16 great promises of protection. You got to pray those over your life. You got to go to Hebrews 1.14 and ask for ministering spirits to care for you, just like we talked about how God sends his angels. Hebrews 1.14 says, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? You got to pray for warring Spirits, warring angels. That's what we pray. My wife is so dangerous when it comes to this stuff. She actually prays for Michael the Archangel when we want to get when, when we get seriously attacked. And we've been seriously attacked many, many times. You've got to know how to pray this. You've got to pr when you pray for a warring angel to be dispatched on your behalf, let me tell you what's going to happen. A warring angel is going to be dispatched on your behalf to do battle in the heavenly realms on your behalf. You may never see it with your physical eyes, but with your spiritual eyes, God will show it to you if you're open to seeing that type of warfare in your life. He will show it to you. And he's doing that for you right now. Even as I'm speaking, a thousand are falling on this side, 10,000 on this side in Jesus' name.
And this a couple of checkpoints for ourselves as we're praying all this stuff. Ephesians 4, 26, you got to check your anger and don't give the enemy any ground to work with. It says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not, to let, the, do not let the sun go down when you are still angry. What happens if I do that? And do not give the devil a foothold. Go to bed angry, you give the devil a foothold. So you may not think it's that bad. Because you can say, maybe it'll be a toehold, but a toehold turns to a foothold before you know that foothold's a stronghold. And all of a sudden, the devil's got his clamps on you. You don't even know how you got there. Because you allowed someone to make you angry. By the way, no one can make you angry. You choose to get angry. You, everyone has a choice. First John 1, 9, you hear me talk about this each and every week. You've got to confess all sin. You've got to clear the deck. You've got to make sure the airwaves are clear. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You've got to pray. This is another prayer that was prayed right before the service. You've got to be able to pray Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. You've got to learn how to pray that. You've got to have people pray that over you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. You got to make sure that you're living your life as a God pleaser. What do I mean by a God pleaser? The Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. So you live a life of faith. That's why coming here is important because faith comes by what? Hearing the word of God. And if you get this word of God into you, where you believe it, receive it, apply it to your life, and all of a sudden faith rises up, and now you're living a life of not only faith but obedience to just do what God wants you to do, you become a God pleaser in your life. You want to be known as the person who pleases God with your life. And here's why. Proverbs 16, 7, it's not up on the screens. I just threw this as a bonus to you tonight. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies live at peace with him. Anybody need that one? Anybody need their enemies to live at peace with them? Then you got to go to James 4. You got to look at this every single day. This is important. You got to go to James 4, 6 through 8. This is important. You know, James 4 starts out, and this is so important. It starts out, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. See all these scriptures? These are the scriptures that I know how to pray when, I'm in this, when there's spiritual mayhem in my life, when I'm under spiritual attack, when there's warfare going on. But the scripture says God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So when I'm getting attacked, I know the scriptures to pray. I know how to take dominion and authority. I know how to take back ground. I know how to pray exactly what to pray when the enemy comes at me like a flood. But when I'm prideful and God opposes me, think about that. God opposes me. He's just, he's not, it doesn't say he's not happy when we're prideful. It said he opposes me. He opposes you when you're prideful. And so when I get attacked, when I get someone opposing me, I know what scriptures to pray. But when God opposes me, I got no scripture for that. I don't have a word for that. My only option is to humble myself and say, God, you're right and I'm wrong. And I'm just going to confess it, repent of it, and just get on my knees and just surrender it to you because I need your grace. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So when you look at James, it says, it says submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Some of you are trying to resist without getting rid of the pride in your life and not submitting, not humbling and submitting. You're trying to resist without the humble and submit part. It says, come near to God and he'll come near to you. So here's the deal. Humble plus submit plus resist equals he will flee. Humble plus submit plus resist equals he will flee. That's why that scripture in James is so very, very important. And just as we prayed earlier, 
the devil's version of 2911, we have to read God's holy word in Jeremiah 2911. And you've probably heard me talk about this. This is one of those scriptures that's a great scripture to pray and understand in your life when you look at how things are set up in scripture where God makes a statement followed by directions that if we actually do what it tells us to do, and then it gives us a promise. So here's a, here's a scripture as a statement followed by our obedience of what we're supposed to do in light of that statement and a promise from God if we actually do what scripture tells us to do. So let's break that down. Here's the statement. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That's the statement. Isn't that a great statement? Isn't that a great, great statement? But here's the directions. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Another promise if we pray. And you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So not only does it tell us to come to him in prayer, it tells us how to pray. We pray when we seek him with all of our heart. And here comes the promise. I'll be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. Isn't that a great promise? Come on. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. You've got to have this one in your arsenal. Be joyful always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Some Christians have this the opposite. You know, be mad always. Hardly ever pray. Okay, be resentful about all circumstances. We do this all the time. Or gossip about all circumstances. Or, or complain about all situations. We have this the complete opposite. And so whenever you see something that says it's the will of Christ Jesus for you, it's a good idea to do it. It's a really good idea. Be joyful always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of Christ Jesus for your life. This stuff works. You got to find people that will pray these scriptures for you. I'm going to ask the prayer team when we're done. We're going to have a little extended time of worship here in just a couple of minutes. I'm going to ask the, the prayer team to pray for every single one of you. I want a lot of you to come out, and I want the prayer team to pray some of these scriptures over your life. Some of you need someone to pray Jeremiah 29, 11. Some of you need to pray Proverbs 16, 7, because your enemies are not living at peace with you. You see, this is an all-in detailed battle plan for those who want victory from all the spiritual mayhem and battles in their lives. And God wants you to fight from a place of victory, not just for victory. You fight from what God did for you on the cross. Like it says in Colossians 2, 14 through 15, he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. You asked for that same victory. Your lives are supposed to represent that victory that was won on the cross. So when you put all these prayers together, and friends, I've, and I've not been praying this prayer lately, but I've prayed this prayer that was put together in this little book called Strong in the Lord, and I sort of revised it a little bit. I've been praying this prayer for two decades, and it has helped me and protected me and blessed me in so many ways. I want to pray it over me. I want to pray it over you. And I want to give you a copy of it at the end of the night. It will be at the information table. And here it is. It's a warfare prayer. It says, Heavenly Father, I bow in worship and praise before you. I cover myself with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as my protection. I surrender myself completely and unreservedly in every area of my life to you. I take a stand against all the workings of Satan that would hinder me in my prayer life. I address myself only to the true and living God and refuse any involvement of Satan in my prayer. Satan, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to leave my presence with all of your demons, and I bring the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ between us. Heavenly Father, I worship you, and I give you praise. 
I recognize that you are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise. I renew my allegiance to you and pray that the Holy Spirit will enable me in this time of prayer. I am thankful, Heavenly Father, that you have loved me from past eternity and that you have sent the Lord Jesus Christ into the world to die as my substitute. I am thankful that the Lord Jesus Christ came as my representative and that through him you have completely forgiven me. You have adopted me into your family. You have assumed all responsibility for me. You have given me eternal life. I am thankful that in him you have made me complete and that you have offered yourself to be my daily help and strength. Heavenly Father, open my eyes that I might see how great you are and how complete your provision is for this day. I am thankful that the victory the Lord Jesus Christ won for me on the cross and his resurrection has been given to me and that I am seated with the Lord Jesus Christ. I take my place with him and recognize by faith that all wicked spirits and Satan himself are under my feet. I declare, therefore, that Satan and his wicked spirits are subject to me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am thankful for the armor that you have provided. I put on the girdle of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the sandals of peace, and the helmet of salvation. I lift up the shield of faith against all the fiery darts of the enemy, and I take in my hand the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. In my life, I choose to use your word against all the forces of evil in my life. And I put on this armor and live and pray in complete dependence upon you, Holy Spirit. I am grateful, Heavenly Father, that the Lord Jesus Christ spoiled all principalities and powers and made a show of them openly and triumphed over them. And I claim all that victory for my life today. I reject all the insinuations, accusations, and temptations of Satan. I affirm that the word of God is true. And I choose to live today in light of God's word. I choose, Heavenly Father, to live in obedience to you and in fellowship with yourself. Open my eyes and show me the areas of my life that do not please you. Work in me to cleanse me from all ground that would give Satan a foothold against me. And I do in every way stand into all that it means to be your child. And I welcome the entire ministry of the Holy Spirit. By faith and independence upon you, I put off the fleshly works of the old man and I stand in to all the victory of the crucifixion where the Lord Jesus Christ provided cleansing from the old nature. I put on the new man and stand into all the victory of the resurrection and provision he has made for me to live above sin. Therefore today, I put off all forms of selfishness and put on the new nature with its love. I put off all forms of fear and put on the new nature with its courage. I put off all forms of weakness and put on the new nature with its strength. I put off all forms of lust and I put on the new nature with its righteousness, purity, and honesty. And I'm trusting you to show me how to make this practical in my daily life. In every way I stand into the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ, whereby all principalities and powers were made subject to him. I claim my place in Christ as victorious with him over all the enemies of my soul. Blessed Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd fill me. Come into my life. Break down every idol and cast out every foe. I am thankful, Heavenly Father, for the expression of your will for my daily life as you have shown me in your word. I therefore claim all the will of God for my life today. And I'm thankful that you have blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And I'm thankful that you have made a provision that today I can live filled with the spirit of God, with love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faithfulness, and self-control in my life. And I recognize that this is your will for me. And I therefore reject and resist all the endeavors of Satan and his wicked spirits to rob me of the will of God for my life today. And I refuse in this day to believe my feelings and I hold up the shield of faith against all the accusations, distortions, insinuations that Satan would put in my mind. I claim the fullness, the fullness of the will of God for my life today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I completely surrender myself to you, Heavenly Father, as a living sacrifice. I choose not to be confused to this world. I choose to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. And I pray that you would show me your will and enable me to walk in all the fullness of your will today. I am thankful, Heavenly Father, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, to the casting down of imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and to bring every thought into obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, in my own life today, 
I tear down the strongholds of Satan and smash the plans of Satan that have been formed against me. I tear down the strongholds of Satan against my mind, and I surrender my mind to you, blessed Holy Spirit. I affirm, Heavenly Father, that you have not given me a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. And I break and smash the strongholds of Satan formed against my emotions today, and I give my emotions to you. I smash the strongholds of Satan formed against my will today, and I give my will to you, and I choose to make the right decisions of faith. I smash the strongholds of Satan formed against my body today, and I give my body to you, recognizing that I am your temple, and I rejoice in your mercy and goodness. Heavenly Father, I pray that now and through this day, you would strengthen and enlighten me. Show me the way Satan is hindering, tempting, lying, and distorting the truth in my life. Enable me to be the kind of person that would please you. Enable me to be aggressive in prayer and faith. Enable me to be aggressive mentally, to think about and practice your word and to give you your rightful place in my life. Again, I cover myself with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and pray that the Holy Spirit will bring all the work of the resurrection, all the work of Pentecost into my life today. I testify to every principality, power, even Satan himself, what the word says the blood does for me. Through the blood I am redeemed out of the hand of the devil. Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, all my sins are forgiven. Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am justified, made righteous, just as if I have never sinned. And through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am sanctified, made holy, set apart for God. Satan has no place over me, no power over me. Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by faith in the authority given to me, I draw a bloodline in the sand and apply that blood over my mind, body, and soul declaring by faith that greater is he who lives in me than he that lives in the world. I surrender myself to you today, Lord. I surrender myself. I refuse to be discouraged. You are the God of all hope. You have proven your power by resurrecting Jesus Christ from the dead, and I claim in every way this victory in my life today, and I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving, amen. I want you to pray that prayer. I want you to, listen, Ryan, could you come on up? As Ryan's coming up, you know, when I first, when I first got saved, I was just praying this stuff every day, and for some reason, I woke up one morning, I woke up one morning, and I couldn't shake Psalm 91, verse 4 in my life. I had this verse that says, he will cover you with his wings and feathers, and the King James Version is, he will protect you with his shield and buckler. He will protect you with this. And I'm thinking, why is this scripture on my mind the whole day? And I'm reciting it. I'm thinking about it. And, I'm, and, I'm, and, and I can't shake this scripture. And I'm praying it. He will cover you with his wings and feathers. And he will protect you with his shield and buckler. I was on a business trip going from Houston to Dallas. It was a late night flight. And I get on this flight, and there's a lady sitting next to me, and I told her, I said, ma'am, you need to know I get really sick on flights, and I'm probably going to throw up on you if you don't give me a throw-up bag. That was when they had throw-up bags on planes, to tell you how old I am. And, uh, and I had this book, Strong in the Lord, with me. And the only psalm in the book is Psalm 91, in this book. You know that, right, David? And uh, you gave me the book, scoundrel. <laughs> and... Uh, we get on the flight, and the plane takes off in the runway, and a tire blows, and all the ru and the engine's right by our window, and as we're in the air taking off, uh, all the rubber goes into the engine and blows the engine up, and the engine's on fire. And we're in the air about 100 or 200 feet, and it's the plane's starting to stall, and the lady next to me yells out, Save us, Jesus! Just like that. And uh, as soon as she said that, I started laughing. I started giggling because I had my book with that psalm out in front. Opened it up to Psalm 91, verse 4. He will cover you with his wings and feathers and protect you with his shield and buckler. I looked at it and I showed it to her and uh, read it to her. She looked at me and she said, it's going to be all right, isn't it? I said, absolutely. And all I can tell you is that after several hundred feet, an auxiliary engine kicked in, and we went up, and we went down, hit really hard, but no one got hurt. 
And, uh, and I came running out of the plane. It was about midnight. Calling my wife up, I said, God did it again. <laughs> he did it again. But you see, I had to have that word in my heart. And God placed it on my heart for me to think about, meditate, and pray all day. Even memorize. And just when I needed that scripture the most, God saved us. When we spoke that thing out loud. So I don't know what's going on in your life. We're going to spend some time in worship. We invite the prayer team to come forward. You need prayer over your life? You can't go at this alone. You're in a war. You're in a war. There's some people here that really know how to do warfare praying. I want you to pray. I want you to come forward, every single one of you. We won't leave here until everyone gets prayed for. You got some spiritual, listen, you may not even think you got spiritual battles, but right now there's a spiritual battle for your life. He's trying to take you out. And I want to encourage you to come forward as we worship. Do that now. Come on. simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus the king of endless words no one could express how much you deserve Though I'm weak and poor All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it when it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. song 
I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you all about you Jesus you're looking into my heart you're looking into my heart you're looking to my heart you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I've made it when it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart.
above all wonders this world has ever known above all wealth and treasures of the earth there's no way to measure what you're worth crucified and laid behind a stone you live to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall thought of me behind the stone you live to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall thought of me above all above all power Above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones. Above all wonders this world has ever known Above all wealth and treasures of the earth There's no way to measure what you're worth Crucified and laid behind a stone You live to die Rejected and alone like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall Thought of me above all You were crucified And laid behind a stone You lived to die Rejected and alone like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall Thought of me above all Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall thought of me above all love you, love you too I say it out loud I love you too is God good? are we going to fight from a place of victory? are we going to take authority? are we going to take ground back? can we give Jesus a clap offering tonight? Can we thank him for the victory won on the cross? Can we thank him that with no weapon formed against us will prosper? When the enemy comes at us like a flood, God raises a standard against the enemy. Can we thank him that he makes even our enemies live at peace? Come on, people. Now, I get excited about this stuff. You should, too. Come on. I love you all. If you want to hang around, get some more prayer. Want to go to groups? You can go to groups. Want to go home? We'll do a one-on-one. I just feel like praying for some more people. Come on forward. God bless you all. Have a good night.
and laid behind a stone. You live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me above all. And laid behind a stone You lived to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall Thought of me Above all Like a rose Trampled on the ground, you took the fall and thought of me.